Hello everyone, uh, my name is Lauren Lewis. I work in the investigative toxicology group at Takeda Pharmaceuticals. I'm currently serving as the PSTC Nephrotoxicity Working Group um, co-chair. Co um, I would like to thank the organizers for letting me speak today about the PSTC NWG activities, uh, specifically about our efforts in the in vitro space. So for my talk today, I'm going to start off with a brief introduction to the challenges of predicting kidney tox, as well as highlight recent advances in some of the renal in vitro models. Then I'm going to speak on several different activities that the NWG is driving forward in order to help identify and develop in vitro models for DRSP kidney toxicity. I will also touch upon how we are surveying the renal, renal in vitro landscape, as well as our current collaboration with the IQ MPS affiliate. Finally, I'll wrap up with an overview of an in vitro pilot study that we have initiated with Nordisk and Signatope. So as you may know, kidney toxicity is a major concern in drug development. It's reported um, only about 2% of drugs actually fail in preclinical studies due to renal toxicity. However, in the clinic, data indicates about 20 to 25% of drugs have failed due to nephrotoxicity. So these statistics clearly show that our preclinical screening tools are insufficient for identifying kidney toxicity, and there's a lack of translation from preclinical to clinical studies. So here, uh, I'm using small molecules as an example. Um, we can see that reported renal adverse events generally increase as the years go on. And then looking at the pie chart on the right, um, this is showing um, the breakdown of which phases the adverse events were identified in. So we see less renal adverse events are identified in the preclinical stage um, in the dark green uh, compared to the clinical phases. I'm showing these figures because I want to reemphasize um, the need for better um, safety assessment tools for kidney toxicity. So currently available in vitro and animal models of drug-induced nephrotoxicity are poorly predictive of toxicity in humans. There are um, several major concerns for each type of model system, and I have tried to summarize um, the key points here. So in terms of in vivo concerns, um, of course, we're concerned about the lack of translation between animal and clinical studies. Um, we also have to consider species-specific variability and metabolic response to um, treatment with different compounds. Um, there is a lack of, generally speaking, there can be a lack of easily accessible um, biomarkers or lack of region-specific biomarkers for renal toxicity. We need to consider um, differences in gene expression across not only preclinical species, but differences between preclinical species and humans. It may be um, difficult to uh, monitor kidney damage in real time. And then finally, um, the three R's concept where we're trying to reduce um, the use of animals in testing. So when we shift over to um, the in vitro concerns, um, traditional models tend to poorly replicate morphology and function of the kidney. We also have to be concerned of the lack of physiological complexity. Uh, that can include um, events like cell-cell interactions um, there's also the issues of low levels of T transport protein or enzymes that are involved in drug metabolism or um, drug delivery. And then finally, lack of reliable mechanistic biomarkers in vitro. So although I've highlighted some major concerns with um, in vitro model systems, um, I would say within the last five or so years, there's been many critical advances in cell culture systems. 
And this has opened a wide range of potential new in vitro platforms that could help facilitate the development of safer drugs and improve clinical management of nephrotoxicants. So with the development of these models, we've seen an increased complexity, and that has really helped with increasing the relevant um, physiology of the models, as well as including key functional characteristics of the kidney. Um, so for example, we can look at um, the box with letter A, um, that's highlighting organoids. These are an example of a 3D culture. Um, they're a multicellular culture that better resembles the structure, physiology, and disease of the kidney. We also have um, systems like the kidney on a chip. Um, that can be um, highlighted by boxes B, C, and D here. And this is better recapitulating in vivo-like conditions um, due to the ability to have media flowing um, through the chip. Um, different um, in vitro models are now using um, cold culture setups. So there's multiple types of cells, which is really important since as we know, um, there's 20 or so cell types of kidney. And then um, we've seen um, characterization of cell lines, um, expression or even overexpression of transporters, enzymes, and other critical um, functioning proteins that are key um, for having a real physiologically relevant model. Um, lastly, we've seen um, the development of in vitro models for specific functional units of the kidney. Um, for example, um, there's some that focus on replicating the proximal tubule or others that are trying to replicate the glomerulus. And finally, um, we've seen a lot of um, increase in studies that include biomarkers um, in the in vitro screenings. So um, all of these in vitro models fall under um, the NWG's current scientific focus, but we're really trying to help identify systems that can play a critical role in nephrotoxic screening. So a little bit about our group. Um, so we're composed of 12 member companies. Um, we've also been broken down into two sub teams listed here, and we have several um, collaborations. Uh, this slide right here is summarizing our current scientific focus. So this year, we're really emphasizing exploring in vitro models to identify drug-induced kidney injury. Uh, we're doing that by surveying the in vitro landscape of current and upcoming renal in vitro models. We are also sharing in vitro model experiences among um, people in the working group. I'll talk today about our collaboration with the IQ MPS affiliate. And then finally, um, we're creating research plans to evaluate biomarker response in in vitro models. So as I've mentioned, um, the majority of renal in vitro assays currently do not adequate, adequately predict in vivo or clinically observed effects sometimes. Um, this can be due to inadequ inadequate replication of the kidney's microenvironment in the models applied in the degrowth strategies. So if we look at the figure on the left, um, it does a nice job of highlighting the spectrum of cell culture from 2D all the way to the complex microfluidic devices. So we can have the 2D culture format and definitely can't be informative. Um, they are easy to handle, uh, but there are some um, concerns um, such as primary cells may have poor growth capacity or the immortalized cell lines can lose phenotypes over time. And they may um, not be good in predicting toxicities of the more complex models. So as we shift through the figure to the right, um, we can see the level of complexity increases. Um, you know, in some senses, that means maybe the model could be more difficult to handle an experiment or not as high throughput. But in another sense, it could increase productivity, which would be great. So we're really trying to understand um, the landscape and find models that um, combine the positives from both um, sides of the cell culture spectrum.
and importantly, um, find models that have appropriate toxicity endpoints and sensitive translational biomarkers. So the NWG has started surveying the in vitro landscape by inviting representatives from different companies to present data on um, their specific model system or cell lines. And I've listed some of the companies here that we've heard from or will hear from in the next um, upcoming months. So we've learned more about um, the systems and we've seen some data and this helps us learn, uh, you know, what models can be useful for toxicity prediction. Um, additionally, we've also had members presenting their own data on um, kidney in vitro models. So by doing this, we hope to have a better understanding of what is working and what needs um, development. So I'll shift into our collaboration with IQMPS. So briefly, IQMPS is um, a group of pharmaceutical and biotech companies created um, as an affiliate of the IQ Consortium. Their goal is to provide a venue for appropriate cross pharma collaboration and data sharing um, with the in intent to um, implement MPS systems in industry. And they do that by putting out requests for information and requests for proposal, which I'll talk about. So the goal of collaborating with IQ MPS, um, so we wanted to combine both of our scientific resources to evaluate 2D and 3D in vitro models of kidney toxicity with the hope of identifying a tool to be implemented in drug development. Uh, so we would like to be able to share data on models that have already been collected, uh, develop a plan for evaluating the systems in a uniform way, also obtain funding from collaborators, and then finally publishing uh, results on these systems. So there's a lot of information on this slide, but I really just wanted to give a general overview of the process. And so that starts out with um, an RFI, which is a request for information. It's the first step by the IQ MPS affiliate and PSTC to solicit interest in collaborating on the testing of kidney MPS for specific contexts of use in drug development, such as a particular endpoint or pharmacology. Um, the information collected during this RFI process is then evaluated by both IQ MPS and PSTC members um, to help in the selection of um, applicants to move forward to the next stage, which is the request for a proposal RFP. Um, so after that, uh, both groups then release an RFP to selected applicants detailing a study designed for a specific context of use. And the responses to the RFP will aid in determining uh, the study initiation. So where we are at right now, um, so an RFI was put out for kidney microphysiological system testing for a specific context of use of drug development. Um, it's now um, closed. The idea was to seek out novel kidney MPS um, platforms so really going beyond the traditional 2D cultures and focusing on recapitulating um, the human kidney environment, especially in terms of the functional um, capabilities. And also focusing on uh, key endpoints and tox responses that are critical for making a model um, informative and safety assessment. So lastly, I'll speak to our um, pilot study that we have initiated with Nordis and Sigmatope. Um, so this study, we are quantifying drug-induced proximal tubule stress based on KIM-1 and, and, other, and a set of um, biomarkers. And so here, um, the plan is to use the Nordis KD proximal tubule chip, um, which is based on RPTEC cells. Um, so Nordis will conduct the measurement of um, biomarker proteins and then additionally 
we will be sending samples to um, Signatope to look at um, a select panel of key biomarkers. So I'd like to, to summarize some key points from my talk today. So we are evaluating the kidney in vitro model landscape in order to better understand available systems for the assessment of drug toxicity. Um, NWG is collaborating with IQ MPS um, to help advance models and identify appropriate endpoints as well as measure biomarkers uh, in in vitro. And then finally, NWG um, is creating research plans in order to develop and validate um, panel, panel in vitro model systems. Um, so with that, I would like to thank CSTC and uh, my colleagues in the Nephro Toxicity Working Group um, for all of their efforts um, in vitro work.